Let's answer the following question. Which of the sets represented here constitute a linear subspace? Let me tell you what these sets are. In A, we have the set of all vectors whose tips lie on a straight line that passes through the origin. Now, you don't always have to say whose tips lie, and you can simply say the set of all vectors on a straight line that passes through the origin. Then in B, we have the set of all vectors on a straight line that doesn't pass through the origin. In C, we have the set of all vectors between two rays. Each of the rays starts at the origin. In D, we have the set of all vectors that lie between two straight lines that pass through the origin. And finally, in E, we have the zero vector all by itself. Now, which of these subsets are linear subspaces and which are not? Let's take a look at them one by one, starting with A. So the two tests that we have to try is whether multiplication by a number keeps the vectors in the same set, and whether adding two of these vectors together keeps them in the same set. Now, for the straight line that passes through the origin, let's do the multiplication by a scalar test first. Well, it's easy to see that any vector multiplied by a number will still lie along this line by the very definition of multiplication by a scalar. It would lie along the same line, just that its length will change according to the scalar by which it is being multiplied. Now for the sum, you can either use the tip to tail method, or you can imagine the collapsed parallelogram. In either case, the sum of any two vectors that lies along the straight line still lies in the straight line. So a straight line that passes through the origin is a prototypical subspace of the plane. It would also be a subspace of the three-dimensional space. So the answer in A is affirmative. Yes, a straight line that passes through the origin represents a linear subspace. More accurately, the set of vectors whose tips fall on a straight line that passes through the origin represents a linear subspace. So we have one subspace. Now let's move on to B. Well, here it's easy to see that if you take any one of these vectors and multiply them by 2, then it will no longer lie on the same line. If, for example, this vector, its tip will end up right here and will no longer be on this straight line. So this straight line is not closed under multiplication by a scalar. It's also not closed under addition because the sum of any two of the vectors that lie on this line will no longer lie on this line. So B is not a subspace. There's one easy giveaway. It's the fact that the zero vector does not belong to this subset. So the zero vector must belong to the subset to have any hope of it being a linear subspace because the linear subspace is closed under addition by multiplication. And so when any vector from the set is multiplied by zero, the result should be in the same set if there is any hope of it being a subspace. And since any vector multiplied by zero is the zero vector, the zero vector must be in, the, in any set that's a candidate for being a subspace. Here it's not the case, so very easily this is not a subspace. Let's move on to C. Let's do the addition test first. And I think it's quite apparent especially from the parallelogram rule, that this set is actually closed under addition. Because if you were to construct a parallelogram, let's say from these two vectors, it would lie entirely within this angle. And so the sum of these two vectors also lies in this angle. So it does pass the addition test. This set is closed under addition. But is it closed under multiplication by numbers? While well, it's certainly closed under multiplication by a positive number, it's also closed under multiplication by zero because the zero vector belongs to the set. So it's looking good, except it's not closed under multiplication by a negative number. Any one of these vectors, when multiplied by a negative number, will end up in the opposite quadrant, so to speak. So this set is not closed under multiplication by numbers and therefore C is not a subspace. Let's move on to D. 
where the multiplication by a number problem is fixed. After all, you can see that any one of these vectors multiplied by any number, positive or negative, is still within the set. But do we have closure under addition? At first it may seem that yes, we do, because the sum of these two vectors, for example, will still be within this quadrant. And the sum of these two vectors would be within this quadrant. So it seems like we have closure under addition, but we don't. Because if you think about taking one vector from this angle and another vector from this angle, their sum would lie somewhere here, outside of the angle. And therefore, closure under addition is broken. So this set is closed under multiplication by a number, but not closed under addition. Unlike the set in part C that was closed under addition, but not multiplication by a number. All right, let's finally move on to this idiosyncratic set in E, which is just consists of just one vector, the zero vector by itself. That's an interesting set. Let's see if it's closed under addition. Well, we don't have too many choices of vectors to add together. The only choice we have is to take two of the same vector, the zero vector, and add them together. And of course, the result is, once again, the zero vector. So it seems like we have closure under addition. What about multiplication by a number? Well, the zero vector multiplied by any number is still the zero vector. So we seem to have closure under multiplication as well. In fact, we have closure under addition and multiplication. Therefore, this is indeed a linear subspace of the plane. So the answer to the question of which of these sets constitute a linear subspace is A and E. And we've learned a very valuable lesson here, that the plane has only two types of proper subspaces. Proper means smaller than the plane itself. The plane itself can be considered a subspace of the plane. But the proper subspaces consist only of straight lines that pass through the origin, one at a time. So a straight line that passes through the origin represents a subspace more accurately vectors that lie on that line, and the zero vector by itself represents a subspace. And later on, when we characterize subspaces with the concept of dimension, we will call this subspace zero-dimensional, the straight line one-dimensional, and the entire plane itself two-dimensional. Now what you should think about next is what are all the possible subspaces in the three-dimensional space.